everyone, my name is The Clever Fool. Happy Halloween, guys. As I record this, we are getting closer and closer to the spooky season. In any case, this time we'll be continuing on with our campaign playthrough of Charles Martel, a uh, custom campaign created by Cat Scientist 282 featuring the Franks and, of course, our hero Charles Martel. Now, last episode, we played through his re-rendition of Tours, which was quite an epic scale, and it featured a defense portion as well as an aggro build and destroy portion. This time, we're going to go ahead and jump into Aftermath. Aftermath takes place between 733 and 734 AD. It details the Frankish invasion into the rebellious duchies of Burgundy and Provence. Managing to defeat the Moors at Tours, Charles, now named Martel, has earned the loyalty of many Franks, but not all of them, Provence and Burgundy, feared that the Moorish tides would eventually overwhelm their prince, and tired of being subjects, formed an alliance with the Moors, those damned Burgundians. This breach into the Frankish kingdoms couldn't be tolerated, and hurriedly the prince of the Franks mustered his armies to reclaim dominance over his lands. Let's go ahead and get started here. Heroes or not, men and women can fall. Armies can be defeated, no matter how proud and chivalrous. Many in the Frankish kingdoms in Germania and even in Italy saw in Charles Martel a savior of Europe, but some of them saw this as an opportunity, that Charles's victory was a mere accident, spearheaded by the unification of their provinces and men, and that now he would be weak. After the death of Odo the Great, due to old age, and his heir wasn't exactly the cooperative sort, Charles lost a strong ally, and his power and charisma wasn't enough to continue to unite the squabbling dukes. Little rebellions and skirmishes flared across the Frankish kingdom. Some rival noblemen and lords rode to the Moors, and some further north to the Germanic tribes and kingdoms to spread dissent and further another attack on Charles's legitimacy. God darn it. The Burgundians and Dukes of Provence formed a loose alliance against Charles together. Their leader, a lord by the name of Mavrant, also rode to Hispania to create a treaty with the Umayyads and pave the way for a new invasion. They were to cement a path around Tours to lead into the core of Europe so that the Moors might bring ruin to their enemies. Charles Martel knew of this. His spies were many, and he had many sympathizers in Burgundy and Provence, and so what had to be done was clear as day. Another Frankish army was levied, and within days, they marched toward the south to eliminate these traitors to their faith. In the city of Lyon, panic arose. Villagers and merchants took their belongings and made their way through the countryside with no intent of being caught in another feud of dominance over who rules what. Not many had the courage to run the risk of being casualties of war. The Frankish kingdoms were all hoping for an aftermath of peace under their suzerain, Prince Charles Martel, but the folly and greed of aristocracy never ceases, and contests of power seem to be what drives the world forward. Alright, our game objectives are to reduce civilian populations in insurgent territories to 15, and I guess we have a tracker for each of their villager populations, which is kind of nice, actually. And we also want to build a wonder within the walls of Lyon. While Charles Martel is alive, we have extra cavalry HP. I'm assuming that's going to be attack, uh, like last mission. We'll see. One HP seems very insignificant. While Childebrand is alive, our heavy cavalry have an extra plus one, plus one armor. We also have a secondary objective to defeat the Umayyad vanguard. Our hints tell us that Charles Martel and his armies have a population limit of 200 and can advance to the Imperial Age. We are surrounded by four different enemies. We will need to either organize great defenses and fortifications or attempt to eliminate some of our foes quickly. We could ignore the Umayyad Vanguard, but while they start small, they will eventually grow to be an undeniably very powerful enemy once settled in. Heavy cavalry has now become one of Charles Martel's mighty weapons after seeing the Moorish usage of mounted warfare, but do not forget that the Franks possess other strengths. It might prove wise to conduct raids on the enemy's town centers as to impair their economy. This scenario is based on the Frankish invasion and subjugation of Provence and Burgundy for rebellions against Charles Martel. Scouts report that Charles Martel in red has built a camp and prepared his Frankish army for an invasion into the territory of the rebels. 
His army is readied for the long haul, and he has a large amount of resources to start with, and it is up to him to use them adequately. One of Charles Martel's targets, the city of Lyon in blue, is a well-fortified city filled to the brim with rebels. <clears throat> Refusing to accept Charles's reign, it is defended by many towers and castles, and the city's garrison will field knights, throwing axemen, and skirmishers. Burgundy in purple has revolved, re revolved, revolved against Charles Martel. They adopt the same tactics. I just got gothic victory for some reason. <laughs> they adopt the same tactics as their one, as one of their strong rulers, Ragenfred. They control two heavily fortified positions across the territory that will be difficult to lay claim to. Their army consists of knights, custiliers, and halberdiers. They have the knowledge on how to construct large trebuchets and possess a small navy to protect and control the river. Province in yellow is likely the most dangerous enemy of Charles Martel present here. They control the seas, a few fortresses to the south of Gaul, and the only ways to access them is through the Umayyad vanguard or the Burgundians. Their armies consist mostly of foot levies such as champions, sergeants, arbalests, and they will train a small navy. The leftovers of the Umayyad army in green was broken near Tours, and they aren't as large or intimidating as they were a few weeks ago, especially since they have already suffered defeats. Charles Martel intends on exterminating whatever remains of the Moors in his lands, but this can wait. The Frankish army will need to fend off groups of Moorish raiders, composing mostly of lance-armed cavalry, Keshiks, Mamluks, and camel riders. So province looks to be, <coughs> excuse me, the Sicilian sieve. Burgundians are Burgundians, Lan is Frankish, and Umayyad is Saracens. It's going to be a 1v4 here by the looks of things. All right, let's go ahead and get started here. Okay. All right, we missed a little blurb there. Both the Burgundians and province supported the Umayyad Caliphate in their war against us. They betrayed their kingdom for the safety of their own lands, the fools. It is time to teach them a lesson in abandoning their faith. Okay, first things first, let's uh, do a little bit of scouting. Bring this relic back. Prince Charles, your dreams of unity have cost our aristocracy too many privileges already, and the Moors have a large bounty on your hand. Okay, not sure what that's supposed to insinuate. Oh, yeah. well, we got a few cows here to grab. We can keep scouting the local area here for more relics. My brother, Burgundians will pay for their betrayal. Let's destroy all of them. That's what I want to hear from my esteemed brother. Yeah, we got more cows. Let's bring them home here. Next few villagers can start coming out on wood now. Uh, doesn't look like that's anything particularly interesting, just flavor by the looks of it. We might want to start identifying some good choke points here to defend. There is a second relic to grab there. Let's grab that, keep training bills here. And we also have no stone, so we can't build any more TCs for now. Looks like this is a river crossing of some sort. Doesn't look like there's anything too interesting in this direction yet. Let's keep villagers coming out.
You've beaten us the once, but our armies are like grains of salt in the desert. You will never defeat us all. Okay. Leave it. Oh, yeah. Leave it. Okay, it looks like this is Lion territory. So I will need to set up a defensive camp here across the water here at some point, I feel like. Got more cows to send home. Let's send them home. Okay, we're getting a dock online. We have lots of spare wood right now because we have lots of villagers right now. I would like to get another town center out at some point. Maybe get a few docks on the water. Let's try converting their scout here. It doesn't look like I'm permitted to train my own warships there. <clears throat> Excuse me. It doesn't look like I'm permitted to train my own warships, which is kind of interesting. Let's get a university out. I already have a blacksmith, which is good. Um, university. Do I have a market? I don't think I have a market, so I'm going to go ahead and build one back here. And we might want to think about trying to get to the Imperial Age soon, <clears throat> in which case we'll need more villagers than the villagers we have currently. Still got plenty of gold here. I don't think I'll gate that up yet. I think I'll just wall it off since I don't plan on encroaching into Lion anytime soon, at least. Okay. 
Was? 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 Okay, we'll pick up Fortified Wall now. Things are looking pretty good. I'll have these bills come over here to get wood. Just to even the distribution a little bit. And I want to start thinking about getting to the next age here. I hope I didn't lock this villain. Nope, looks like we're good. Okay, and I think I'll bring my two soldiers back here. Let's grab a scout to scout around better. Uh, and start thinking about getting to the Imperial Age here. Very good. Let's get some staples, maybe. Tighten up these defenses by walling that area off. Let's mine out some more stone. Might want to even consider double layering here. Probably would be a good time to figure out where the Umayyads are at. A castle at this tree line back here would be a good idea. Town center back here would be a good idea. Get these stone miners out forward on those berries there. Let's double layer those walls up. Pick up gill nets. Let's do inf armor. Do bearded axe. Start training throwing axemen. Start training knights. Okay, and the Umayyads look like they train Mamelukes. Okay, let's get a couple of trebs going and get some throw an axeman going. The shortage is really food. It's not wood, it's not gold, it's not anything else. I guess I could do a forward castle here. Okay, 
fait fait. Okay. Oil. Certes. Pastiste. Bûcheron. Chasseur. Crier. C'est. Pastiste. Le feuille. L'hiver. Oh yeah. Certes. Of course we're losing our initial trebs here. You hate to see it. Okay. But now, now we can start thinking about going on the offensive here. Bearded Axemen are quite strong. I don't know how those, where those Burgundians came from. No, 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 we run, we run, send these trips back. So far, this has been more or less a total disaster. Uh, but luckily for us, our production is coming online. And these are just skirmishes too, so they're not super scary. I think using the throwing axeman here was a good idea to kind of have them consolidate here a little bit. We'll have these guys remain on the defensive. Start moving forward. I'd like to get a forward castle here. What are those? That is a scary looking forest, not gonna lie. Let's build another castle here. Oh 
Alright, let's get uh, Blacksmith, or rather Paladin Tech online at some point. Things are starting to speed up a little bit. Still no major attacks from blue yet. Take this opportunity to pick up Elite Search Aunt just in case. We have most of the techs that we're going to need here. Alright, that is a big squad of Siege alongside trebuchets that are coming. We'll need to figure out a good way to fend those bad boys off. Okay, for some reason my hotkeys are giving me sergeants now. Don't know why that's happening, but it's happening. My frame rate all of a sudden crumbling to bits. You know, under normal circumstances, I'd be content to let them sit there, but I feel like they're they're just completely eating up my frames right now. Those paladins that are stuck over here. Yeah. 
Okay, so we left a bit of a gap here. Uh, I'm also going to rebuild a couple castles here, just two more. Just to make sure that we're still at our pop cap. Lots of relics from the Umayyads here. And we are cleaning them out pretty handily, I think. My prince, we have acquired many Moorish camels whilst the Saracens fled, and some of the prisoners are willing to help us learn how to ride. Should we use them? Should we use them against the horsemen of our enemies? We can create camel riders and camel archers at the archery range, but their cost is increased. We also have a technology called Maghrabi camels. Beautiful. All right, so far so good. It seems like Blue, instead of attacking across this bridge, they've opted to attack from across the coast more. So now, like, their pathing is a lot more straightforward. And we have unlocked all these resources over here. I'm gonna bring some trebs back home. Just so that I can, uh down this castle in the middle here and it doesn't seem like there is any additional I guess there's another additional set of shallows back here right Oh, 
c'est fait. Axe. Pastisor. 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 Ok. Prêt. Oui. Libé. Bûcheron. Ok. Ok. Fait. Artisan. Ok. Axe. Bastisor. And we're actually probably going to lose this forward castle here right away, unfortunately. These war galleys should get cleaned up by the castle, theoretically. Can I create transport ships? I can create transport ships. I might actually do that just to see if I can transport across to the other side of the walls on this this end here. Those siege rams move quite quickly. It must be because they're garrisoned. This 
is a three pronged attack, unfortunately. As all the units together. And that's a that's might be one problem, which is like after they clear out some of my forces, they don't seem to be interested in retasking themselves over. <clears throat> like they seem to kind of just get stuck where they currently are. I wonder if I should make an initiative to push into Lan here since I actually know where they are. That might be a solid play. I think getting into Burgundy's walls here has been pretty vital though. If only I had more population headroom, man. I feel like if I'm gonna go 1v3, I deserve some some extra population space. I guess this is where I start focusing on transporting units back, back over. Let's keep getting pallies out. If we can make this a two on two, that would make me feel much more at ease than before. Uh, particularly the Burgundians, though, because they're training halberdiers, which are somewhat annoying for me to deal with. Let's go ahead and drop a four TC here. I think these transport ships are actually going to give us give us the, the juice here, the secret sauce.
This can't be the main Burgundian base, unfortunately. At least I highly doubt it, because it looks like they have a lot of villagers here. Well, that is unluckily our Burgundian foothold taken care of here. Gotta make good use of our military groupings here. have plenty of gold for this foreseeable future and resources shouldn't really be an issue either Oh, it would have been really nice if I could get that gate down and then just start streaming in. But we can start gathering our forces for a secondary attack here. Let's do this. We sell our castle gather points here. We set our barracks gather points here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And just really make sure that we are leveraging our full population cap. Okay. 
This area seems to be an island, maybe? Or maybe completely cordoned off, but there is stone over there to be had if we need it. Haven't seen much from Burgundy at all recently. Which... Oh, well. As if on cue, right? Situations like this make me really, really wish I had spies. Just so I could get a closer look at what's actually going on here. Is a Burgundian trebuchet. I'm gonna send these paladins as deep as I can just to see just to see what's out there. I think we need to beat a hasty retreat here. Deal with yellow real quick on this side. Rebuild this castle. Hey. 
And really get this gold through. I'm gonna scout forward to see if there's any more Burgundian stuff going on back there. There's two Trebs, one from each faction. There's so many Trebs actually. We need to start getting in on production buildings here. Castles, stables in particular. I think especially the stables. Why are there blue units here? That's what doesn't make much sense to me. Like, how, how'd that happen? Okay, that would also contribute to it. I feel like having 40 paladins stuck between two stables would uh, throw things off just a little bit, you know? I was wondering what was going on. Okay. 
It might be a prop better proposition to attack the Burgundians here, actually. Maybe even get a second castle online here. You know, keep the expansion coming slowly but surely, right? He actually looks like he has a lot of uh, civilians that are outside these walls. That's something to consider. He does have a base. Okay, so he does have a second base here. I think going for Burgundy first here is the answer. Eliminate their safe havens. And like, Blue doesn't look like he's in the mood to help, so instead of futilely pushing into him, we can instead make a better effort towards cleaning up Burgundy here. Okay, so now unfortunately because Yellow is sending an attack force of rams, I might need to redirect some paladins back home. I think I'm going to redirect these guys back home here. There's a stable back here as well. We are actually running low on gold. Burgundy's losing a lot of civilians, so as so long as we can just hold here past this attack, we should be good.
Fortunately, I'm able to sell a lot of our food here for good gold. That's really good. Secret is production buildings. We need to nail more of these production buildings down. Stables are particularly needed to get down, so that there's, there's a stable down there. Oh gosh. Civilian population is actually recovering now. Crazy. Oh, these guys are even like stuck here. That was just a meat grinder. Keep spamming town centers. Uh, those are allied check routes, I guess. A 
Aha! Lots of villagers out here. Relic gold might end up becoming super vital for us here. I thought those were my paladins too. But we're definitely making progress here. 36 civilians. 34 civilians. Still lots of gold piles down here that we haven't used actually. I'm gonna rotate these miners down here. And these guys are actually free to run themselves into my castle, I don't mind here. Thirty-one civilians. Where is the rest of the civilian Burgundian population? There's a bunch mining gold out here. 30, 29, 25. Okay. Can you? Nineteen. Oh, we're only a few sieves off here. Eighteen. Seventeen. These two kills should do it. And herein lies the importance of not giving up. We are definitely... We've definitely reduced the insurgent population by quite a bit here. I think now what I can do is I can turn around and beat the crap out of Lion here. Whether Regenfried is here to incite rebellion or otherwise, the Burgundians are traitorous rats. I will have to install a much fiercer iron grip around them this time around.
Alright. So now even though we aren't 2v2, unfortunately, we're only 1v2 as opposed to 1v3. So I'm feeling much stronger about our chances here. We can start knocking down more castles, start knocking down more town centers. And even consider rotating villagers up north here so that we can start constructing the wonder. And as for Lion, their elite throwing axemen are actually the most threatening here. Because once they get to a big nasty block, it's really hard to clear them out. The skirmishers are pretty much completely worthless against our team comp here. Building a wonder in Lion. I'm assuming that this is within Lion because it's within the within the walls here. We'll go ahead and get started with that. And yellow has been out of the picture for quite some time now. The relic gold is actually coming in clutch from the Umayyads. Very very good stuff. Do I get treadmill crane? No. Don't really need it though. And I think Lion should be given up soon here now as well. I definitely don't recommend attacking them first. I think that was a bit of a gotcha there. They're very hard to push, especially when you have Burgundian forces to consider. I think taking out Burgundy is probably the easiest way to go. And Burgundy produces Custilier and Halberdiers anyway, which do pretty bad damage to your Paladins. So, yeah. All in all, I think it's important not to lose composure in the 1v3 and to push, or the 1v4 rather, and to push the Umayyads as early as you can. Seven relic gold is nothing to scoff at. It looks like our friends in Lion have resigned. Yellow also hasn't attacked us recently.
Lyme now belongs to the Frankish Empire once more. This cathedral will be a symbol of our power and unity. Okay, Pirax. Pastisor. Oh yeah. Okay, artisan. Okay, Fio. Oh, et Ibe. Pastisor, prêt. Okay, he didn't get his swing here. Oh god. Alright, so we were able to somewhat adequately protect these rams. Oh, yes, 
All right. Now that it's a fair 1v1, Yellow should not really stand a ghost of a chance here. And their villager population is rapidly dropping. Lots of defensive donjons. That's neat. I do like that aspect of the base design here. Where if the enemy has a unique building, they, uh, they're they sprinkled around the base. I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, so another grindy mission. Uh, it turns out Cat Scientist missions are fairly grindy. But I think the important thing is to kind of follow the ebb and flow of, of combat. It's, it's much more macro-based combat than micro-based combat. Still building a mining camp. Now these dogs from province will have learned their lesson well. Indeed. Maybe there's an Easter egg to be discovered further east here. Now if the south of Gaul will be a proper part of the Frankish Empire, when we return to Paris, all men who fought with me will have a night of feasting for free. Allah Al Jahim Lahum. They've taken out province of Burgundy, those rabid Frankish dogs. Charles Martel is exposed and weakened. Kill him. Wait. The caliphate will pay us well if we rid the world of him once and for all. Can you imagine actually getting the villagers to gather these fruits? They'd be making a trek through very hostile territory in order to do that. Hey. Hey, say. Oh, it's not over. Oh, God. I, I thought... Oh, my goodness gracious. Uh, well, these guys might be screwed. As long as I don't have siege weapons, I should be okay. That is quite a lot of bad guys, though. And I didn't expect them to come from that direction, either. Yeah, they're just knocking out castles through sheer numbers alone here. <laughs> I thought that was like part of a flavor text, man. I didn't expect that to happen at all.
Alright, that was pretty scary. I feel like it would have been really scary if they had introduced some siege weapons. But fortunately it doesn't look like they have siege weapons, which is good. Um, yeah, like if they had a bunch of trebs or rams behind this, it would be extremely frightening. It's a pretty strong army as well. I think that's like fully upgraded Saracen camels. Alongside camel archers. Look at look at that! Like look, look at these numbers, because they got zealotry. That's a camel archer with 110 HP, man. It's crazy. Alright, so it does look like we have the situation more or less under control now. You can't run forever. You just sprint through my guy. Is this guy scouting or something? Where's he going? The Umayyad army is in full retreat. Look at them run. Hurrah! And we did start gathering these fruits in the end. We have lost many men to this last battle, but let us return to Paris and finally rest. Wonderful. Charles Martel despised one thing above all else, and that was treason. From his youth to his now current reign, betrayal struck him again and again. When his kingdom suffered the consequences, he was known to be temperamental beyond belief to just about everyone for many weeks. All the traitors, dukes, and leaders of the resistance against his reign were butchered. His knights had been given the order to spare no one that had aided in the rebellion of Burgundy and Provence. Mavrant escaped to Moorish territories, but just, thanks to a fast horse and a witty retinue. Charles then seated lords who were true to his rule, inviting them to attend the executions of those captured, to suddenly indicate their fate if they were to rebel also. Oops. Didn't read that last segment fast enough. This, uh, this is from Barbarossa, from a Barbarossa campaign, I think. A bunch of blinded guys with a guy with only his nose cut off so he could lead the blinded guys. Nobody who found an excuse to not attend was named in a position of power. The Moorish hordes arrived late into province, and thanks to the cunning of Charles Martel, the Umayyad forces were smashed and routed within hours. Many of them fled back to Septimania. It was as if my grandfather could predict what the enemy would do and would find a counter to that before it was the battle had even begun. Nice. Oh, so there is one last relic that we didn't capture all the way back here in the darkness. And, oh, there's a big stone pile back here that I never discovered. That could have been good as well. And having access to the open sea to fish 
Would have been nice, but uh, I'm pretty sure the Sicilians had a bunch of boats at some point somewhere, right? Yeah, I think they had a navy here, and we weren't allowed to make our own warships, so that probably wouldn't have worked out so well. Uh, but all in all, yes, once again, a very grindy, prolonged scenario. But pretty satisfying in small doses. I do, what I do is like, I play one of these every once in a while so that uh, I don't feel like the fatigue from doing multiple, like super big Frankish scenarios in a row. Um, I do, I do enjoy them. I, I definitely think they're different from like some of the filthy Pedia style, filthy Delphia style, not filthy Pedia. Uh, Filthy Delphia, some of the, you know, like Bassy OC style campaigns, they're shorter, smaller. These have a massive scope, and I respect that ambition. You can definitely see where certain aspects of the game are really pushed to their limits, though. Um, having tons of access to stone means I'm just, like, spamming castles everywhere, right? And, yeah. Anyway, that was the sixth episode titled Aftermath. Thanks for watching, everyone. I will see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.